Hello, hello! Welcome everyone! Uh, this time I'm changing the lighting again. Because I didn't, I didn't really like it last time, but I think that looks good. You guys will tell me I'm wrong in the comments down below, please. I, I just need to do what um, Heartless Weave had recommended I do and get just like a legit lighting setup. This is what I got right now for this room. <laughs> okay. It doesn't look too bad, right? There's some lights over there too. Mini, mini manga tour. Look at that. Mini manga room tour. <clears throat> Anyways, I actually read quite a bit today, or this month, <laughs> this week. I, I can't imagine if I read this all in a day. I probably would have had the day off or something and it may be a lot of Adderall. I don't know how I could even have this much concentration. I've never, never been so concentrated in my life to read all that in a day. So this week I read two, four, five, six, seven-ish, because this is one and a half. I want to say that this is probably one and a half, maybe. I don't know. So we'll call it seven, uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen volumes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a lot. That's more than I normally read for sure. So Chainsaw Man volume 10. I'm not going to show too much of this volume because, well, we're at the end. Okay, we're getting to the end. Chainsaw Man, the devil, Chainsaw Devil goes crazy. I don't want to spoil it, even though I'm sure everyone's read this by now. But holy crap, the action in this is intense. We're getting towards the end. Makima is the worst person ever. We we really get to figure out what Makima's up to, kind of. We can see everyone is not Makima's friend, and then everyone is Makima's friend. So that's stinky. I hit the camera. You guys probably noticed that right away. I didn't notice that until it was too late. Deadpool Samurai Volume 1. This was actually pretty good. I expected this to be kind of trashy. There's a few things that like you miss out on, I'm sure, because you don't have the, you know, internet, but that's cool. It still was a good read. I did enjoy it quite a bit. There's a few things, you know, that I um, didn't expect. Like, I didn't expect there to be Loki in it. I didn't expect there to be other Marvel characters in it besides Deadpool. I thought for sure there would just be the original created characters, kind of like this weird spider person that shows up. But there's actually even Bruce Banner and everything like that. So that was kind of neat. Um, but this is pretty fun. Very meta, of course. Deadpool has a lot of jokes from the movies and the um, the video games, but not as much through his most latest comic book renditions. Even in the past uh, six years, he's he's more like his comic book stuff from like 10 or 12 years ago. Which is what is represented in the games and the movies as well. So that kind of makes sense, but it was a little surprising to see. Record of Ragnarok, Volume 2. This has a lot more action in it. We get to see Thor finally fight uh, Lubu at the end here. And then also we get to see Adam start fighting Zeus. This was a sick fight as well. Actually, two fights are resolved in this one, I think. I think it's two. Uh, but I don't want to spoil who wins what, but... This is a series where I think you should start picking it up. The first line was a little slow, but it has since gotten much better. Uh, quite, quite a lot of action. If you're getting into this for the real story of it, you're fool. This is all about the action. The story of these characters was built up in history class. You should have paid better attention because it's awesome to see them fight. There is, of course, some background to each character, and they tell you who they are and why. Um, you know, the way why they they were picked, that kind of thing. But yeah. Came the Mirror and Other Tales by Rubiko Takahashi. I really like this cover. Very shiny. Uh, and I think that's supposed to be the mirror in their hand from the first story. This is several short stories um, from <clears throat> uh, Rubiko Takahashi with a little ending of um, Mitsuru Adachi. I don't know if they're married or if they're dating in real life or what, but it seems like they know each other pretty intimately, so that was kind of cool. I probably should have looked into that before I filmed this, but I didn't. Bunch of cool stories in here. Uh, <laughs> some of them have like the most bizarre ending. It's like, I swear, they are like performing this story and then the story is like gonna end on a sad note and then all of a sudden like the bad thing just goes away and it's the end. And I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> so <laughs> the endings are kind of lackluster. They're actually kind of a little funny. Um, but it undermines the whole rest of the story, so that was interesting. But I definitely did enjoy this quite a lot. I like this one more than probably even a curatory. I was a big old book of artworks. This is like the perfect amount. This is very compressed and quick and easy to read. I didn't feel like it dragged on at all. 
Speaking of didn't drag on at all, they've got Dragon Quest Monsters. Get it? Because it's like Dragon, Dragon. <laughs> I'm a funny guy. This was definitely canceled early. There's no way they wanted it to end on Volume 5 because it just ends. It totally just ends with, um, you know, our main character kind of freeing that girl who separated herself and the Demon King. And then it shows Terry. He's like, ha, ha, ha. He's doing so good. And then he gets sent back to his own world. And I'm like, what the heck? That's cool, I guess, but why? And then all of a sudden, uh, it just shows you why Terry became evil, kind of, but not really. And the end. And I was like, what the heck? There's not an ending to this. Uh, it was a really good volume up until then. There was a cool, bunch of cool fights. We get to see the new move that Slime, Slimy learned. Uh, that was very cool. His name's not Slimy, but I, I honestly can't remember his name for the life of me. All the slimes are named like little slime puns. But uh, yeah, I can't believe that it was canceled. I thought for sure it was just a you know short five volume series and that's all it was supposed to be. Clearly, that is a lie. It is definitely supposed to be more than that. And it's not more than that, which is too bad. Because it wasn't bad, it was a good read. I wouldn't recommend it unless you were a fan of those games, the Dragon Quest Monsters games. But I really didn't expect it to have been canceled and just end out of nowhere like that. But that's the way it goes, I guess. This is the North Star Volume 4. We get to see some sweet color pages. Um, Kenshiro versus his brother here. Holy smokes. These are cool fights. I love it when Kenshiro fights his brothers because his brothers actually know how to fight. And they really bring on the heat. He fights one brother and then he fights another guy who... Is that his brother? Is that his brother Toki? I don't know. I'm not going to tell you. But the other guy was definitely Jigen. Or Jagen. I don't know how you say his name. Anyways... All of these fights are awesome. I did really enjoy this reading quite a bit. Uh, I always fly right through Fist of the North Star. It's a huge amount of volumes or pages to read, but it's always worth it. <laughs> it still has that new page smell, so it makes me sneeze sometimes. <laughs> that's why I sneeze. Okay, that's it. Um, I don't really know. What else to say about this other than if you're not reading it, you probably should be, and you know all about it. Grandpapa of the jump stories and stuff like that. The colored pages are a little weird because they're all orangey, kind of like how... Um, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, the first few parts are like that as well. I don't know why they do that, they just did it that way. JJK Volume 14, this is a sick cover, and you know what, Volume 15 is also a sick cover too. I'm not going to show you guys too much of 15, 15 has some crazy deaths in it, and also an awesome fight. We get to see Sakuna kicking ass, I, I blew through these volumes, most of them are just, like, just action. Just straight up action. So I had a huge, huge rush reading this. Hamburger! I agree. Um, we also get to see that uh, Mashita has a few other enemies besides our main man here. So that was very interesting too, because you think that, you know, it would just be Itadori, but it wasn't. And I was like, whoa, whoa. And also Mashita can use like Black Flash. Like what the heck is that about? That was amazing too. Uh, so <laughs> I can't believe this arc is still going on. You know, I, I really enjoy every chapter, every volume I get through with it on this. This is easily the best uh, JJK's been. Like, <laughs> I can't even get over it. Next volumes can't come out fast enough because holy crap. Kaiju number eight. Shiny number eight. Uh, volume two. Another series that I feel like is getting really good. We get to see that there are other humanoid uh, kaiju. Like that guy, see him with his broken neck like that? That's nuts. And see, he's in the toilet. He's making the poops. Anyways, so we end up making it to the extermination squad or whatever it's technically called. You know, he's in the, the corpse who defeats the kaijus. And he is like kind of hired as a joke guy. But the guy who picks him is like very interested in his ability. Uh, he has some sick scenes popping up because he is a beast. His kaiju form is always very cool to see. You can see how he just punches this dude into oblivion. He is crazy strong. A few little color pages here as well, which are always neat to see. I'm loving kaiju number eight. It's just classic kaiju battles. Uh, can't get enough of that kind of stuff, I feel like. It's, it's always good to read that. Rave Master Volume 21. So Rave Master, we find out the end is a big giant thingy. And we also find out that Lucia, 
<laughs> says that they don't need to be friends and, he, Rave, and Haru says yes we do we all need to be friends and then they go their different ways um, we also get to see Lucia using Sacrifar as well that was really cool to see it uh, but Endless is just insane Lucy, uh, Lucy Ellie gets taken over by her previous self Russia things happen okay I don't want to talk about it too much I'm going to stay very vague here we get to see C go back to his hometown. C goes back to his hometown. Everyone's out to get him. Why are they falling to Dark Card? No, C has been tainted by the, just the natural world as it is, and he feels like the world is more than just time, and you know they should be aware of that. So it's this very long epic magic fight of C versus magic people, and then cuts back to Musica and the team with our main man uh, Shugo here. And that's kind of, you know, how it is. We get to a dance competition. We got to do dancing, okay? And this guy who, you know, I swear, this is like almost identical to uh, Puri Puri Prisoner. These angel wings like that, but whatever. I think that's pretty fun. Uh, so the dance competition is on. And Ellie has a fancy dance where everybody thinks she's a dragon queen now. However, we are stopped by this big old monster, okay? The big old monster blows up the dance studio. And the Blue Guardian takes away um, this person who says that they've got Ellie. They don't actually have Ellie. They have a resistance member, but they lied. And that was kind of how that's going to go there. I can't believe some people would do this, but they don't want to die and they want to get promoted. I mean, what can you do, right? So the Blue Guardian guys uh, let them escape so that way they can bring them to the resistance base. They bring them to the resistance base and they said they knew where you were. And they said, no, that's the oldest trick in the book, you morons. They said that just so you'd bring them here. And then they're like, oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, and it is played for jokes because it is the stupidest thing in the world. Um, but then we get some sweet fights here with these guys. Uh, they seem to be all animal based. Like one is a jaguar, one is like a dog. The dog is like a super pervert and he's just like blowing this girl's clothes off. It's kind of bizarre that they would do that, but that's what they did. And then we have Haru fighting this like third party weird guy over here. I don't know anything about what's going on with that. He just totally popped out of nowhere, like right here in this scene. And I was like, damn, that's sick. And that's kind of how it ends. So Rave Master is killing it. Kaiju number eight is killing it. JJK is killing it. Chainsaw Man is killing it. What else is killing it? It's <laughs> of the North Star killing it. And uh, I, I've been a big fan of Record of Ragnarok and Deadpool. Deadpool is pretty good too. What are you guys reading? Please let me know down below. Um, like, comment, subscribe if you guys haven't done that yet already. And we'll see you on the next video next week. Same time, same place. See you there. Bye-bye. Uh,